Talk to me about the importance of rehearsal and how that, I guess, helps you, you know, weather the storm. Oh, I think no, I think it is. It has everything to do with efficiency. I mean, I was just talking about a scene that we shot yesterday with uh, 11 speaking roles and about four and a half pages in a town hall with 100 extras and uh, multiple co coverage necessary. And we were shooting in a cinematic way, not in a, mm -hmm. you know, over, over, close, close. You know, it's, we're shooting it rather well, I must say. Mm. Uh, a great young uh, cinematographer, Jackson Parrell. Um, anyway, so what I did, was say I need an hour's rehearsal, and of course production goes, oh my God, you can't have an hour. I say no, I want an hour's rehearsal before the crew, before anybody comes right. on. Then, then all the actors know what they're doing, and and I'm very clear of what I have, not what I'm hoping to have, but what I actually have in terms of performance. It's for the excellence of the performance, but it is also the most efficient thing. We 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 shot eight and a half hours. Uh, uh, from call time to wrap, it was eight and a half hours, as opposed to ten hours, twelve hours, because of that time spent early. Right. You know, and and production, there's a lot. Of, you know, a lot of production doesn't think that way. So yeah. sometimes the director has to ed educate them a little bit. Now, on DeGrasse, mm -hmm. do you have time? I mean, it, it, it's such a fast-moving show. It's a lot of components. We have two days of rehearsal for every episode. Really? For every block that we do. So yeah. we, what we do, How because we're such that. a collective, <laughs> as far as our cast is yeah. concerned, dude, we can always, we, we separate two days while we're shooting the uh, prior block. Mm -hmm. We'll get those kids, we'll steal them from set, and we'll bring them in for rehearsal. And just the ones that are most necessary. It changes how we move, how fast we go. They come in more grounded mm -hmm. because at least they've had a chance to, you know, beyond a read through, sit down and go, what's working, what's not. Sometimes if you want to do like a big winner, yeah. you know, you can't get them on set, you got 12 kids and try to move around the school and they're I'm like, you're, you, get, you get to explain to them, guys, if you screw up now, or on the day, uh, we're gonna be here all day. So we can sit there and we can play with yeah. the lines and try to see what works and do almost sort of like mini blocking in our, we have a rehearsal space. Yeah. And uh, it, it, it makes all the difference in the world to have those young actors come to set prepared in the way that they are like, so is this like when we rehearse? It's like, well, let's, no, now we can fool around. Now we can try different things. But to have them come, we save so much time oh, yeah. on the floor. It is, more people should be doing it. I yeah. think it's an amazing time saver to actually be able to, and like I said, we have a big cast. So we can steal some when they're not, it's not, they're not always on set. So we don't, we can, we can take people from here and there while they're shooting, we're not going to school and rehearse with them a little bit makes a big difference. Now, Alicia, my impression when I watch Baroness Von Sketch is that everything feels kind of like live and in the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, I, Maybe that's just because it's working and you've, yeah. you've convinced me. Um, are you able to kind of try things or do you try and just kind of capture it as there's you, definitely as you There's go? definitely a lot of improv, which is what you're probably yeah. feeling. Like that's their, that's their background, that's where they come from. But we, going into it, just because we knew we had so little time and we're shooting so many, like we're shooting five sketches in a day sometimes. You know, there's like, it was mm -hmm. a crazy, like we would do eight, 10, 12 pages sometimes. It was insane. So knowing you're going into a schedule like that, like when I started, I kind of demanded some rehearsal time and, and mm -hmm. we only had two days. And because they're all stretched so thin, those two days kind of reduced to like an hour here, an hour there. And I would have loved to have more. And mm -hmm. hearing you guys talk about it, I. No, no, I'm going to set my phone down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Demand it. But at this end, there were certain ones, there were certain sketches that we knew were going to be kind of a little more complicated in terms of how I wanted to shoot them. So those are the ones that we would rehearse. But you certainly couldn't rehearse all 115 sketches except for in the like private blocking right, right before we shot it. So, but in some ways, you know, there's, you don't want to over rehearse a show like that because it's so, imp you know, there's yeah. so much improv. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So there's, it was more just for the complicated kind of blocking scenes. Um, but yeah, there's, it was all kind of, for me it was like I would put them kind of in the zone so at least I could capture it all and then give them room to kind of play around within that. But a lot of the times too it was, you know, the, it was funny reading the scripts because they would end on, um, end on, pri on uh, you know, with the, the scripts would be written and it would be like fade, fade, on, fade on banter, yeah. you know, or something like that. <laughs> it's like, but you know you can't cut <laughs> yeah. on banter. Like it just doesn't doesn't work that way. So so a lot of the times they would they, you know you could let them go for like they would go forever and just keep talking and talking. But then eventually you have to kind of rein them in a little bit and you know be like okay we need something to end the scene on so mm -hmm. that we can cut. But mm -hmm. yeah. So so, so you know. Ken on 
On Pure, where you have, like, it's a very structured story. There's an arc. You're working towards an endpoint. You have some big scenes, lots of people in a church or what have you, There's action, explosions. How do you preserve the space to let your actors still find moments when everything is so kind of structured around them? Well, that's uh, the trick of the director. I mean, that's what the <laughs> yeah. director does. Okay, so uh, tell us. I, well, I, I mean, I, I come from theater. Oh, really? I come from a, a place where it's all about the text and it's all about what's going on on the stage and mm. it's all about that. And in theater, the sort of uh, reverence toward the text and the performance and uh, how the space is occupied with the energy of the actors is sacrosanct. Mm. And on a film set, um, you know, when I was starting out, I was shocked yeah. at how much it orbited the technical side of things. And it took me a while to understand, and now that, you know, um, I'm a bit of an older dog, as it were, <laughs> um, and more deeply and meaningfully understand the technical side of things, uh, I arrive on the set with the attitude every day that uh, all of that stuff is kind of, you know, after you've uh, made your decisions about, you know, shot composition and you've kind of done your blocking and you know you know what's going to happen and you've turned the set over to the the crew to kind of light and make it happen really the the whole reason you're there is that you know 45 minutes or an hour and a half that you get as a director with the actors on the set that's mm -hmm. what it's all about it's not about anything else it's about th that scene those faces the energy on that particular day and how you find the truth of the scene on that particular day. Mm -hmm. And I suppose from, from my roots in theater, um, um, I, I, I've just always uh, really tried to preserve, and I suppose I realized maybe uh, earlier than I may have had I not come from theater, that uh, that has to be protected at all costs. Mm 